the CEO's panel, and we start uh, with uh, Pascal Sorio from uh, AstraZeneca for six minutes. Thank you, Chairman, for giving you the floor. Honorable members, commissioners, Kyriakis and Breton, thank you so much for the opportunity to discuss how we can work together to tackle this pandemic. I have the privilege of leading a global biopharmaceutical company with a strong European heritage. We employ over 20,000 highly skilled staff in Europe, and we manufacture across 12 locations. We are proud of our Swedish roots, and Sweden is home to one of our three global research centers. We invest 2.7 billion euros in research and development here every year in Europe. Today, I would like to make three points. First of all, to outline our pledge to deliver global equitable access to up to 3 billion doses of our vaccine at no profit. Second, to give some insight into the complexities of developing a vaccine at scale and in record time. And lastly, to set out ways we can further accelerate production, build manufacturing capacity, and prepare for future pandemics. When Oxford University approached AstraZeneca last spring about the development of a vaccine, we shared the same vision to provide timely and equitable access to the vaccine at no profit during the pandemic. On a global scale, through partnerships with government and multilateral organizations, attempting something like of this, something like this, of this magnitude and this complexity at speed was unprecedented. Yet, it took us eight months to conduct clinical trials to evaluate the safety and efficacy of the vaccine, while simultaneously building more than a dozen supply chains with over 20 partners in more than 15 countries to cover all regions of the world. Today, we have a vaccine that is safe and effective. We are currently supplying 100 million doses per month globally, which will increase to 200 million doses per month from April onwards. As you know, there are almost 8 billion people in the world, and the needs are enormous. The real-world evidence from Scotland published this week shows that the vaccine is able to substantially reduce the risk of COVID-19-related hospitalization by 94% by after the first dose. It also demonstrates that the vaccine protects against severe COVID-19 outcomes, in particular in older populations who are at, at the highest risk. Much like the European Commission, we recognize the need for equitable access globally. The, the COVAX facility is a key pillar of our global access strategy. Our vaccine will be by far its largest contributor for early access during the first half of 2021. Together with our partner, the Serum Institute of India, we will supply over 300 million doses for COVAX. The first COVAX shipments started this week with the first delivery and landing uh, yes, in Africa yesterday, actually in Ghana yesterday. Which brings me on to Europe. Like you, of course, I'm disappointed that lower, lower than expected output in our dedicated European supply chain has affected our ability to deliver. But I want to assure you that we are ramping up production and doing everything that we can to deliver 40 million doses in the first quarter of 2021, enabling the vaccination of over 10% of the EU, EU population. It is sometimes easy to forget how rapidly we've gone from knowing very little about this virus to developing a safe and effective vaccine that has received approval in countries accounting for more than 75% of the world population. This brings me to my second point. Developing and manufacturing a safe and effective vaccine normally takes years to perfect, test and stabilize the manufacturing process. We have undertaken in only months an ultra-complex effort that is not without risk. Vaccines are biological medicines. The manufacturing process is much more complex than for chemical medicines. It includes thousands of parameters that need to be constantly fine-tuned to deliver the highest possible yield. The sites with the longest experience in manufacturing the vaccine therefore tend to have the highest productivity. We have experienced lower than expected yield at some of our production sites, but we are learning quickly every day, and I'm confident that with growing experience across the network, volumes will rise in the second quarter. So let me be clear. First, we have given our word to deliver as per our agreement, and it is my absolute priority to meet the high expectation that we have set. 
Second, the causes for the challenges we are facing in the EU are of an operational nature. And third, we are resolved to working with the EU to find this, fight this pandemic. I want, I want to thank Commissioners Kyriakides and Breton and the Parliament for our ongoing collaboration. Let me now turn to how we can increase the capacity of COVID-19 vaccine production and strengthen preparedness and management of future pandemic. I see two key points. First, we must seize every option to increase manufacturing capacity. To, this, to do this, as a company, we are making significant new investments, such as our recent partnership with IDT Biologica in Germany, which will expand European capacity and create one of the largest capacities. We want to help Europe becoming independent in its own manufacturing supply. We are also sharing our knowledge with new partners across our global network to learn and improve outputs. And finally, we are mobilizing manufacturing partners beyond the EU to provide additional streams of drug substance. On the clinical side, our scientists are running trials worldwide to test our vaccine platform against new variants. I'm confident that we'll be able to share new data soon. The second point I want to make is that President von der Leyen can count on us to support the new ERA initiative, which, which can harness the potential of manufacturing capacity in the EU. I would like to thank her for her leadership of this important initiative. A lot of the capacity already exists, but HERA can better connect, mobilize and increase uh, the capacity further. To achieve this, we would recommend that HERA, first of all, has flexible and agile decision-making to guide member states and rapidly ramp up manufacturing as needed. Secondly, has a strong focus on regulatory harmonization to support the mobilization of supply chain across different geographies. Uh, regulatory harmonization has, is really needed to facilitate this in the future. Thirdly, it should enable an epidemiological surveillance system connected to the rest of the world to address early outbreak. And finally, it should have a budget and a staffing needed to develop innovative solutions at scale and in record time. In conclusion, I would like to reaffirm AstraZeneca's absolute commitment to this global fight against the virus. We're doing this because it is the right thing to do, and we are doing it at no profit, broadly and equitably. Vaccine supplies are increasing, and before too long, their impact will begin to be felt. I'm confident that by working together, the wounds of the pandemic will begin to heal. Thank you again for the opportunity to be part of this panel today. Thank you, uh, Mr. Sorio, and I guess uh, quite a, a few questions will be addressed to you uh, a bit later on. Uh, we move to uh, the uh, second CEO part of this uh, panel, Stéphane Bancel from Moderna. The floor is yours. Bonjour, good afternoon. Chers députés européens, Monsieur Canvin et Bouchois, honorable membres du Parlement européen, Madame la Commissaire européenne Stella Kyriadis, Monsieur le Commissaire Thierry Breton, je tenais à vous remercier d'avoir invité Modana à cette audience. Dear MEP Canvin, MEP Bouchois, Honorable Member of the Parliament, Commissioner Stella Kiritadis, and Thierry Breton, thank you very much for inviting Modana today. My name is Stéphane Bancel and I'm the CEO of Modana. The collaborative effort between the European institutions, European member states, and industry to end this pandemic has made remarkable progress since efforts began this time last year. Today, in support of the important work of these committees, I would like to focus on three areas. The promise of continued mRNA innovation to protect Europe, or strong partnerships that have allowed manufacturing ramp up in such a short period of time, and our commitment to continued collaboration between Moderna and the European Union. Firstly, let me begin by saying that I'm extremely proud of the work Moderna is doing as a growing global health innovator. The pioneering mRNA technology in a pandemic vaccine will be offered soon in other vaccines for infectious disease, like CMV, cytomegalovirus. The virus is the number one cause of birth defect, and for which there is no approved product today, as well as therapies such as immuno-oncology. These innovations will continue to deliver benefits to European citizens and see mRNA technology support new initiatives such as Europe's beating cancer plan. In immuno-oncology, we have five drugs in clinical trial. Health innovation is helping us to win the war against the virus. It is a team effort, and we are today seeing the first fruit of that labor 
as vaccinations are rolled out to the most vulnerable people around Europe. I am proud that Moderna is one of the early vaccines made available at an unprecedented speed, and we continue working hard to end this pandemic. We have announced a comprehensive strategy to tackle variants, which leverage the flexibility and the speed of mRNA platform. Yesterday, we shipped to the US National Institute of Health, to Dr. Fauci's team, the product for first phase one for the SARS-CoV-2 variant known as B1351, first identified in the Republic of South Africa. As you all know, this is a variant of concern. And so we're very proud that this product has been shipped to start clinical trial very soon in humans. We, of course, welcome the HERA initiative and congratulate Europe for such an important initiative. Secondly, manufacturing innovation and partnerships have been central to speeding up our vaccine delivery. As a biochemical engineer myself, with a history of working in manufacturing plants and global supply chains, I was conscious of this challenge from the beginning, as we had to develop a safe and effective vaccine, but then we have to produce it in extraordinary scale in a very short time frame. One year ago, Moderna had no supply chain in Europe. We had never launched a commercial product. Today, we are already delivering millions of doses and our capacity is increases. Usually, it takes three to four years to build manufacturing capacity for a new product. So we partnered with European leading companies like Lonza, one of the largest contract manufacturers in the world, in Switzerland, Rovi in Spain, Recifarm in France, and our distributor, Kuhn plus Nagel in Belgium. The increase in doses we produce week on week has already been substantial. At the same time, we know we have experienced firsthand some of the fluctuation of usual ramp up. Normally, a company will stockpile a new product and then at approval will release large quantity into the channels. Of course, this is not normal times. In the pandemic, uh, every dose is crucial and we want that dose not to be in a factory or a warehouse, but to be in somebody's arm. So each dose we make is shipped right away. We have no inventory, which means that any minor setback, like a broken pump or a simple human mistake by one of our operators, can mean less doses produced that hour. And because we run nonstop, that hour is lost forever. The numbers we are producing today uh, are far from indicative of what we can produce in the future. We expect that the additional capacity investment, which we announced yesterday, to drive to up to 1.4 billion doses in 2022 will be helpful. If we successfully demonstrate that booster can be done at a lower dose, we are currently hoping 50 microgram half the dose that our current vaccine authorized is for the booster. This will allow to make more, many more these doses and, and potentially helping up to 2 billion people. European supply is one of Moderna's biggest commitment to date. With this in mind, we are constantly refining our processes in manufacturing, finding new efficiencies, and we con continue to improve our speed. I am dedicated, as is my team, to delivering on this increasing delivery commitment. Thirdly, as a European citizen myself, am I proud of our collaboration? Thanks to the advanced purchase agreement, the European Union enabled strategic collective procurement. Additionally, I am thankful that the EU took the risk to bet on mRNA when Moderna and others in this panel brought this new type of vaccine candidate to the table. In turn, we stand ready to work hand in hand with European institutions and national governments and to contribute to the European Union Biodefense Preparedness Plan. I deeply appreciate the opportunity to appear before you today, and we at Moderna are profoundly grateful for the support and the collaboration the European Union has provided Moderna in our joint effort to combat this pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Stefan Bansel. Uh, thank you for your presentation. And I go quickly to Mr. Franz Werner Haas, CEO QRVEC. You have six minutes, please.
Sorry. Thank you very much, dear Chairman of the Parliament, dear members of the Parliament, uh, dear Commissioners. Thank you very much for having also CureVac here as the first mRNA company founded in 2000 to build out the mRNA technology, which now makes obviously a big difference to the situation we are all facing, with the, which is the pandemic, uh, and not only in our hand. So we are the company um, which is hopefully close to have an approval of our mRNA vaccine against COVID-19. Uh, and I want to focus on four points. Uh, the one is an update where we stand, coming from the technology into the clinical development. It's the stability of the product itself, which shows that there is a lot of innovation in the product. Um, then certainly the ramp up of the manufacturing, which the speakers before me clearly laid out because that's exactly what you need for a situation like this one. And then also coming then to the HERA approach to what all what we are doing right now is a preparation for pandemic preparedness, especially when it comes to manufacturing in combination with the technology. So where are we? The company was founded in 2000 and the manufacturing was built out in 2006 and all what we produced until last year was kind of homeopathic in quantities because now there is a huge need. Um, we are at the moment in phase three in uh, Latin America as well as in Europe and uh, we are facing interim readout in the mid of April which would and we started the rolling submission that we are planning to have a conditional market approval somewhere in end of May, beginning of June, depending on the data, of course. At the moment, our data readout, what we can see is that we can expect a high efficacy there as well. And we are following certainly also with the variants on which I will come back in a second. We have been doing quite a lot of effort in the phase one and two, A and two B, in order to generate a safe and tolerable uh, vaccine, because based on a new technology, which is as new because there is no at the approved product so far, it has changed, uh, God thanks, in uh, the last few months because of Moderna and BioNTech Pfizer. Um, uh, but it is quite clear that there should be no concessions to be made on the safety and tolerability of a vaccine to bring into healthy people to be protected. Then certainly it is an important role um, to, to have not only a vaccine, but also to spend quite a lot of effort in the technology to have a stable vaccine uh, with a fridge temperature to make the distribution even better, to give even uh, dosages to people in private practices. And by that, you can see there is a lot of technology going into the development of the vaccine, which is ra rather fast, as uh, Stéphane Bancel just said. Um, and uh, it is not easy just to tech transfer these technologies to any third party which is what we are doing right now, coming to the third point, which is the ramp up of the manufacturing, which you certainly need in order to provide in a rather short period of time, while the product is being developed, also to spend money into an investment into the ramping up of um, the manufacturing capacity, which is a clear bottleneck. As I said before, there was no huge manufacturing on mRNA so far before the year of 2020. And uh, then certainly there is a huge run also on the starting material and the equipment to build out the manufacturing capacity and facilities. And this is what we cannot do by ourselves. And therefore, we generated and established a pan-European um, collaboration and network with more than 15 partners all over Europe um, to establish exactly the PDNA to, as a starting material for mRNA, the mRNA production but also the formulation, the LNP, for all of which you need starting material to start with, and then the filling, packaging, labeling, and then, then the transportation as well to the clinics and later on into the market as well. That's a huge effort where, in parallel to the truck development and the upscaling of the manufacturing, there is a lot of technology transfer because it's not only that you give the recipe to one other, but also all the know-how which has been generated during all these years. But it's worth the effort 
to really come up to up to 300 million dosages in our hand from uh, CureVac uh, and uh, then more than a billion dosages for next year in 2022. And the capacity, because we are talking about variants which are spreading around the UK strain, the South African strains, and potentially other strains to come there as well. So even there is a collaboration with scientists, which variant you have to take into uh, consideration to code on the mRNA, what we are doing there as well on the current construct, but also on the next generation as well, because even there you can do better in order to develop this technology any further for the need. And having said that, it uh, comes with that you even need to uh, scale up the manufacturing even more because in the same manufacturing unit you can produce the Wuhan strain and then in the same batch you cannot take another one. So if you try to compose also other strains, uh, you need to build up even more the manufacturing capacity. But this is the clear roadmap as we see to scale up with regard to HERA. We are very happy that this initiative is taken by the European Commission, by the Mrs. President. And uh, we, we are working on a concept that we make use of our pan-European network for manufacturing, but also having the scientific uh, expertise bringing into the new variants that we are working on a concept to have within six months period of time to have vaccines for all over Europe, for every European on the next variant, and even beyond COVID for any other pandemic to come where mRNA certainly will make a difference. And perhaps the last word, it is also thank you very much for the European Union also to provide this kind of construct of APAs, which is giving us a possibility to take these investments, which without having a vaccine in place at the, when you start all this and taking up the manufacturing capacity to exactly scale up for the success case where mRNA will play a, a role and uh, companies like us, where we and our entire company feel very dedicated and committed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Haas. Um, I strongly wish you to succeed in order to have an additional vaccine to fight COVID. And I go now to the fourth CEO present, presented today, here in our uh, extraordinary event, uh, Mr. Stan Erk, President and CEO of Novavax. Please, you have the floor, same time allocated. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. And thank you for the opportunity to appear before you today. I'm Stan Erk, and I've been President and CEO of Novavax for over a decade. Novavax is a biotechnology company focused on the development of next generation vaccines for serious infectious diseases. We are at the forefront of the fight against COVID-19. I am proud of the progress that Novavax has made during the past year. And we at Novavax are proud of the advances the entire vaccine industry has made to develop safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines in record time. I'm pleased to be here so that Europeans can become familiar with our company and the vaccine platform we've been building and refining for decades. As you'll hear, our technology was built for this moment. Our scientists continually scanned the landscape for emerging threats, and we started development of our COVID-19 vaccine candidate in January of 2020. Today, I'll walk you through development of our COVID-19 vaccine candidate and our manufacturing operations and supply chain in Europe. We recently announced that our COVID-19 vaccine candidate demonstrated high clinical efficacy against the original Wuhan SARS-CoV-2 strain, and is the first vaccine to demonstrate clinical efficacy against the rapidly emerging variants that first began circulating in the UK and South Africa last in South Africa. Last month we reported interim results from a phase three study in the UK with efficacy of 96% against the original COVID-19 strain and 86% against the UK variant strain. We are optimistic about our ability to help address urgent global health needs and we have already initiated development of new formulations against these emerging strains. A hallmark of our technology platform is that our manufacturing processes are easily adaptable to producing updated versions of the coronavirus spike protein that match the new strains. We initiated development of new formulations against the emerging strains in, Jan in early January of this year, and we are already testing them in preclinical studies. The company plans to begin clinical testing of these new vaccine candidates in the second quarter of this year. Six months ago, we began to build out a global manufacturing operation to produce our COVID-19 vaccine 
at commercial scale worldwide. Much of our supply chain is based in Europe. In the spring of last year, we acquired a state-of-the-art vaccine manufacturing facility in the Czech Republic to produce our antigen, and our facility in Sweden has long produced our adjuvant, Matrix M. We have also partnered with organizations in Germany, Ireland, Belgium, Spain, and the Netherlands that will produce our final package product for European and global use. Vaccines like ours can be efficiently produced at massive scale to help meet global demand. Novavax vaccines are manufactured, transported, and stored at standard refrigeration temperatures. This helps simplify production distribution and use. Once all of our capacity comes online globally, which we expect to happen around the midpoint of this year, we will have the ability to produce approximately 2 billion doses per year at a rate of roughly 150 million doses per month. Our initial delivery of doses to the European Union is dependent upon an authorization from the European Medicines Agency and execution of a contract with the European Commission. Novavax has begun what's called a rolling review process with EMA, And as part of the rolling review, the company will continue to submit additional information, including clinical and manufacturing data. Our pivotal phase three trial in the UK is ongoing, and we are still collecting data. This is an event-driven trial, meaning that the timing of our final analysis is based upon disease incidence and rates of transmission in the areas where participants are enrolled, as well as other factors. We know that vaccines don't save lives. Vaccinations do. Novavax is committed to transparency and accountability, which are critical to public confidence in COVID-19 vaccines. As part of that commitment, we made our clinical trial protocols, enrollment numbers, and clinical data publicly available. We believe this is one of the key ways to ensure public confidence in any vaccine that will ultimately be authorized for use. We also know that pandemics don't observe country borders. Novavax is committed to reasonable pricing, equitable distribution, and allocation and expansive access worldwide, which is what will be required to fully control the pandemic. Our progress during the past year is unprecedented and we could not have done it without our partners, collaborators, and the more than 50,000 volunteers who are participating in the clinical trials of our COVID-19 vaccine candidate. We look forward to making our vaccine available to the broader public to fight this pandemic. And thank you so much for inviting me to participate in this hearing It is an honor to to appear before you today, and I look forward to your questions about Novavax and our COVID-19 vaccine candidate. Thank you.